said that to say that um, it's important. It's important for us to, as brothers and sisters at New Discovery, to allow our minds to look both ways when we're going across the street. I beg you, I plead with you, please read your scriptures every day and let them become a part of you. Please allow them to get into your mind. I look at my young sister over here and, 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 I, and I, 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 I want to say, just start memorizing it. Start letting it get in you. Start letting it come out of you. Because I've seen some really excellent success stories here in that people uh, come off the river, get saved, come up. They don't necessarily have to come off the river, but they've come from, they've lost their children. I've seen them get their children back. I've seen them uh, start applying themselves to God's Word. You don't even have to come from that kind of background. You can come from a good home. It doesn't matter. My point is, is that more than anything in the whole wide world, I, I, I really wish you'd just start getting that word in you. And I really wish that when you get it in you, you come share it with me and talk with me and build me up. Because I need building up just as much as anybody. Amen. 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 Galatians 5.17 says, <laughs> let me find it. I think I have a beer mark here. It's just another passage of scripture that talks about And I didn't mark that one. But Galatians 5.17 is another one that talks about the importance of, of, uh, of uh, transform, allowing your mind to be transformed, transfigured. I will close with this. This was really uh, something that I thought, thought to be very, very uh, of value, of use. I was looking for that passage of scripture that, and I read part of it to you. It says, uh, prepare your minds for battle. And I think in one of the translations, I'm not sure if it's the American Standard. I want to say it's the American Standard Vision that says in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, prepare your minds for battle. For the devil is like a roaring lion, roaming around seeking to whom he may devour. Okay, and I couldn't find that. And I probably didn't open up my American Standard Version, which I have. It was one of the first Bibles I had. But... Uh, um, I believe that's what it says in the American Standard Version. And as I was reading that, uh, I was watching my wife as she prepared for her Sunday school class last night, and she came across this uh, uh, study on the armor of God. And I was looking at it, and looking at it very intently, and I was looking at each piece of armor, and I thought, okay, well, what piece of armor applies to what we're talking about today? Obviously, can anybody raise your hand and tell me what, what, what is it, sister? The helmet of salvation, yes, that actually does apply. Actually, the breastplate, the whole thing, you guys, the whole thing applies. But I was thinking the sword of the spirit because the sword of the spirit is what? The word of God. The word, right. So I thought, you know, I will give you a little bit of what this has to say. The Greek phrase translated of the spirit can also be translated by the spirit or spiritual, referring to the nature of the sword rather than its source. From the context, we know it is a spiritual weapon to be used in our struggle against spiritual enemies because our battle is not with flesh and blood, is it? No. Okay. That's right. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3 and Ephesians 6, 10 through 17, the preferred rendering as, as a uh, of origin of the Spirit, indicating that the Holy Spirit as the origin of the sword. So as a spirit of truth in John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit is the believer's resident teacher, truth teacher, who teaches us all things and brings God's word to our remembrance in John 14, 20. For those of you who are wondering where that came from, because I quote it all the time and I always forget where it came from. Uh, Paul explicitly states that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So that's why it's so important to allow yourself to transform your thinking, your uh mentality as far as everything is concerned. There's no exception. Nothing should be left out as far as your way of thinking is concerned. I um, I said I was going to close with that, but you know, actually your thought just came up. It's really, really important to know. I started to say what part of the mentality of the world is. I know that for men, I, and, I, and I can't speak for women because I'm not fat. I'm not, um, what's the 
obviously we've got pride. Men have a big thing with pride. Our pride keeps us from crying. Our pride keeps us from saying, I'm sorry. Our pride keeps us from saying, you're right. You know what I love about my wife? 37 years. She recognized my pride a long time ago. And she spoke right through it anyway. She spoke truth and said, God, protect me. Because <laughs> he's going to get mad. And I would get mad and I'd walk around the park and say, God, did you hear what she said to me? That's ridiculous, Lord. There's no way. I'm not like that. So I would go back and I'd tell her I'm sorry. And then she'd go, I'm sorry it wasn't good enough. No. What are you sorry for? I mean, what? I go, what? What? What are you sorry for? <laughs> Women, you guys get it. <laughs> Men, we don't get it. It's pride. I'm sorry I said this particular thing to you because I know it attacked your person and I'm really sorry I did that. Take note, men. That's what you say. You tell them what you're sorry for. You don't just say, I'm sorry. They want to know if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, I, God gave them all the brains and all of us. Just, we're just kicked back and back. I just want to watch football. <laughs> I just want to play softball. That stuff's too hard. No, it's not. You have the Holy Spirit living in you. It's trying to transform you to a godly man, not a worldly man. I hate when I have to tell my wife I'm sorry and she's right, but I do. Because I know, you know why really I think more than anything? Because of what he's done for me. I will humble myself for him to anyone, anywhere, anytime because of what he's done for me. And if you look at it that way, if you look at what all he's done for you, how he's forgiven you, don't forget the things that he's forgiven you for. That is so important. It's, so, I, it, it's important to remember it for the purpose of your humility. It's not important to remember it for the purpose of it bringing you down. Okay? So I'm not trying to do that. Just don't forget where you came from, who you were before he found you, before he brought you home, before you might have been a good person, or at least you thought you were a good person. You never cussed, you never spoke, you went into their bars, you never didn't hang out with women who you should have been hanging out with. You were a good person. But guess what? You weren't a good person. Because the Bible says that our goodness is like filthy rags to God. He's holy and he's perfect. So you did fall from somewhere. I don't know. I've never been there. I mean, I have now, but I wasn't before. So, it's important to think that it, this is another wrong thought. I'm a good person. Why would God send me to hell? That's wrong. Because someplace in your life you lied. Someplace in your life you cheated. Someplace in your life you thought maybe I'll have an affair with this person. You did things that maybe wasn't seen by somebody else, but you did them. You sinned. And one sin is enough. Because our God's perfect. And the thing that I love about him is he's perfect. I was telling somebody this yesterday. He's perfect in his justice. He's perfect in his mercy. He's perfect in his correction. He's perfect when he, when he, he knows when to lift us up and build us up. And everything I'm sharing with you here today is from reading the Bible from the age of 23. Nothing did I think up on my own. Everything he's taught me along the way. Because I keep looking both ways when I cross the street. Because I keep underlining. Because I keep highlighting. I don't always feel like reading. I don't always feel like coming to church. I don't always feel like being a nice guy. I'm just like you. I have bad days. 
I don't always feel like letting the guy at work say something to me that would offend me in my flesh. I want to say, what is wrong with you, butthead? I do. Because I got this old sinful nature in me still. And we will not be perfect until we see him face to face. Amen. And with that, I will close. Amen. I love you guys. I hope and pray that every day of your life, no matter how you feel, whether sick or ill, whether you're just having a bad emotional day, that somehow, some way, you pick up that devotion and you stop thinking about everything going on in your life and you give your God undivided attention for five minutes and I guarantee it will grow. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are. I thank you for your faithfulness to us. Lord, we praise you and I just ask, Lord God, that no one would walk out of here today of the same as when they walk in. I pray that through your Holy Spirit, it's only a gift from you, that you touch us in such a way that you inspire us, that you reinvigorate us, that you bring a revival in us. Father, that we can step outside these doors and be different. So we need you, Father, to set our hearts on fire so that we can allow the transformation of our minds and our hearts take place. Not when we feel like it. Not when we're on the mountaintop. But when we're in the valley. Lord. Blessed be your holy name today. And thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Now before we go, I'm going to play.